So there's three types of supports that are used in civil structures, um, or three main ones um, that we're going to look at today. Uh, and they are pin supports, roller supports, and pick supports. Okay, and um, they're used in all sorts of structures. So um, bridges, uh, buildings, uh, trusses, um, traffic lights, towers, all, all sorts of things. Um, and um, that almost everything that we think about is fixed in one of these ways or is represented in one of these ways. Um, and so when we're doing uh, mechanics questions, looking at um, civil structures, and, and other types of mechanics questions. Um, often, whatever is happening, we um, show it uh, symbolically using one of these symbols. So this one here, which has a triangle on top of this like hatched line, um, is used to represent pinned. Um, and when you think about it, this is like a pin, um, with like a bolt at the top here. Uh, supporting something like or a pin supporting it um, and this hatched area is like represented of something that's solid something that's fixed in place and not immovable ground if, if, if that makes sense um, and so we're fixing whatever it is that we're analyzing to the ground using a pin in this joint so like a, a bolt or a pin that's that's going through this bracket and then through a bridge or, or whatever. So that's that's pin, so it's this triangle on top of this hatched ground. Uh, roller looks similar, it's a triangle, um, still on top of hatched ground, but it's got these rollers, or these circles in between to represent wheels or rollers. Uh, there can be two of them, there can be three of them, um, uh, but they show that it's much the same, uh, but with rollers, uh, which acts as you'd expect with wheels, allowing something to be able to move back and forward. Lastly, fixed um, has like a beam or whatever going straight into the immovable object, the solid ground. Um, and so that's, as it sounds, it's completely fixed. There's no movement that's able to occur. Um, okay, but so for each of these, we need to um, know how they interact, uh, what kind of movements are able to happen there and then um, the opposite to what movement is going to be happening is what kind of forces are going to be supported or what reactions are going to be occurring at that point okay so um, if you think of it as like a bolt that's sticking straight into the board here and um, a beam or something that's attached to that bolt now if you attach something with one bolt unless you tighten it up really really tight it's going to be able to move um, it's still going to be able to rotate around that bolt. And so pin joints allow rotation. So I'll put it in green to show that it allows rotation around that pin. But the, the bolt or pin is going to be able to stopping things from moving left or right, horizontal movement, or up or down, which is vertical movement. So I'm going to draw those in red. To symbolize them stopping. So there's going to be no vertical movement and no horizontal movement occurring because of that bolt going through it or that pin. Okay. And so when we're calculating what's happening and uh, working out what's happening in a beam or in a truss, we need to know what how it's being supported by the, the, the ground which is the reactions that are occurring. And the reactions are opposite to this movement. Um, a more technical word for this ability movement is degrees of freedom. So how many degrees of freedom does this have? Well, this one's only gonna have one degree of freedom. It's able to rotate. It's not able to go uh, left and right. It's not able to go up and down. So um, anything that's not occurring here is going to be something that we need to think about as a reaction. So it's not able to go up and down. So it is going to have, oh dear, it is going to have a vertical reaction, quite likely. Um, it's not able to go left and right, so it is going to have a horizontal reaction, quite likely. Now, a moment is like a twist and bend. Um, it's 
it is able to twist or to rotate, so it's not going to be able to have a moment um, because a pin joint only allows rotational movement or rotational movement um, motion. A pin joint only allows rotational motion. It resists or reacts to horizontal or vertical motion. So that means that it re has reactions for the horizontal and vertical motion. Now, a roller joint is like a pin joint that's on wheels. Okay, and so it is also able to rotate. So that means that it's going to have a reaction. It's not going to show a reaction to moments. Not going to be happening because it's able to rotate. It's not going to have a moment going through it. It is able to move left and right because it's like it's on wheels, like if it's a skateboard or something with wheels in that orientation, you'd be able to push it forwards and backwards. Um, so it is able to move backwards and forwards, which means that it is, I changed my colors here, that should be green. It isn't going to have a horizontal reaction. Now, just like a skateboard, if you stand on it, it's able to stop you from falling into the ground. It's able to give a vertical reaction. So it's not going to move up or down. Um, so it does have a vertical reaction that's going to be occurring. Um, and these uh, might be a bit, um, you might not see them uh, very often, uh, unless you're really starting to study the underside of bridges, which you should do. Um, but often they will actually look like little rollers between maybe parts of the bridge and the, the pylons that it's built on, um, allowing a bit of movement. And it doesn't have to be much movement, it just has to be a little bit to mean that it's not fixed in that horizontal direction. Or it can be done using low friction materials as like a skid plate. So maybe Teflon or graphite or something along those lines that allows it to be able to move sideways, slide sideways with low, low friction, or it can have like funny little ski type things built in that will slide along a plate. Um, they all allow a little bit of horizontal motion, but are still able to provide the, the support to hold the weight. Um, pin joints, um, my favorite examples and, and ones that I think you can really see well, if you go underneath the Harbour Bridge, right? Um, down at, near the pylons, um, there's like a diagonal um, area of stone and as a kid I used to love running up it and seeing how high you could get. Um, but coming out from that diagonal stone is these huge things that look kind of like hinges. Um, and so they're huge brackets that are built into the stone or concrete, I'm not sure what it is to be honest. Um, and then they have these huge hinge looking things which are actually pin joints, and the whole bridge is supported off pin joints. Um, and it's at both the north and the southern shore of the Harbour Bridge, which is interesting. Um, most bridges that we look at and beams will combine a pin joint like this with a roller joint like this, because then both sides of the bridge are able to support its weight pushing up and the pin joint is able to stop it from going anywhere, being able to, because it supports it horizontally. Um, but the roller joint is left free, so it doesn't support it horizontally. And that's to allow for expansion due to thermal changes and, and whatnot. Um, and so um, normally with a bridge fixed at one point, as the temperature increases, it'll expand and it will slide slightly. And it's only going to be a tiny bit, maybe five centimeters, 10 centimeters, um, the, the roller joint will allow it to slide ever so slightly. Um, but the hub bridge is an interesting case because it has pin joints at both sides. So it's not able to move like that. It's not able to move horizontally. So what actually happens is when the hub bridge heats up, it still expands, but because they're kind of pointed up into this cool arch shape, 
um, the expansion actually just makes it bend slightly and rise up. And apparently on a hot day, the Harbour Bridge can be like 10, 15 centimetres taller than it is on a cold day because of expansion pushing that arch up. Whereas most bridges will move sideways, and that's why whenever you drive over a bridge, you hear the <laughs> um, of it, like you, you feel it going through the car, and that's going over like an expansion joint, which is where the road surface is able to expand. Sorry, expand. it'll expand by making that gap smaller or contract by making the gap get a bit bigger. Um, okay, and so um, a roller joint will provide a vertical reaction, but not a horizontal, and it won't um, provide a reaction to a moment. It will allow horizontal and rotational motion. Um, that's not, this isn't always the case um, because a, a roller joint can be used uh, at a different orientation, at an angle, or it can be used vertically even. Um, but this is the vast majority of the cases we deal with it happening in a, with the wheels in a horizontal direction. Um, to be more precise, a roller joint will provide a reaction force perpendicular, so in this case it's up and down, um, to the flat ground, which is perpendicular. Up and down is perpendicular to the flat. Um, and it won't provide a um, reaction force horizontal, which is parallel to the flat. But we could put this, we could do a roller that is drawn like this in a vertical direction. And that, like if you have a skateboard and you lean against a wall, it will stop you from being able to move horizontally. You're not going to fall into the wall. But if you lift it up and down, it will just roll on that horizontal wall, vertical wall. Um, and so if your roller was done in the horizontal, uh, done like this in the, in the vertical, it would provide a reaction to horizontal, but not to vertical. Um, but for most cases that we look at it, it's like this. But you just need to think about it like a skateboard. Our last type of reaction is a fixed reaction. Okay, and that's, as it sounds, it is fixed in place. It's unable to move. So it has no um, degrees of freedom, no movement, which means that it resists or reacts to um, twisting. We also resist or reacts to vertical and horizontal forces. So it's got no movement. So it can provide a reaction to vertical forces, horizontal forces, and moments. And um, this type of joint uh, is often looked at in, in beams, particularly like can cantilever beams, that beams that need to um, resist bending and, and twisting. Um, but also lots of structures actually made with fixed joints, whether it's welded in place or whether it's bolted with lots of different, uh, lots of bolts rather than just with one that's allowing rotation. So in this example, it's like a horizontal um, beam is like connected to a vertical column um, with lots of bolts, uh, holding it in place fit in a fixed way. Um, now, interestingly, when we're analyzing trusses, we always assume that they're joined with pin joints. Um, and that's just part of our definition of a truss. So a truss has to be joined with pin joints. And the way that we're able to assume that is because it's made out of lots of long and skinny members, um, we can kind of ignore the idea that they might be joined, actually welded, or they might be joined with more bolts in a fixed way because long skinny members aren't able to impart a bending force without them buckling in themselves, so they can only impart tension or compression. So a truss, any kind of truss that we're looking at, we assume that all the joints are pinned, apart from maybe the other reaction, which will be a roller. Um, but all the joints in between, we say a pin joint, and at least one support has to be a pin joint, um, even though it might not look like that. And that's that just helps us be able to analyze trusses and, and use them as, as they're uh, expected.